Best Podcast Ever is sponsored by the Gertzberg Law Firm, a full-service business law firm in Cleveland and Chagrin Falls that's changing the way businesses retain their attorneys. Go to GertzbergLaw.com to learn more. While you're there, check out Cover My Six, a complete legal audit of the six areas that most often create or prevent business lawsuits and government investigations. Go to CoverMySix.com to learn how we keep you safe. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to listen to the best podcast ever recorded. Sometimes the real answer is, I'm sorry, no. No can be a valid answer. You can't fix everything for everyone. Yeah. Hey, folks. Alex Gertzberg here. Welcome to another exciting episode of Best Podcast Ever. I'm sorry I'm shaking the camera. Um this is Paul Marnicek. Paul is a great friend and a great dude. You're about to hear uh, a cool interview with him that uh, unfortunately I had to cut a little bit short. I did not manage my time well. I think we go about an hour, um, but we had at least another half hour or hour of cool shit to talk about and we didn't and that's on me. So Paul, well, I think this is Paul's third or fourth time um, on the episode and uh, or on the on the podcast. So he's coming back. He's Paul's a lifer. Paul, you're a lifer. Um, Paul is a dude that I really respect in a lot of ways. He, uh, so biographically, uh, he's a Cleveland native. He is the city council president for the city of North Royalton. He is a director of business development at the greater Cleveland partnership. Um, he is on multiple nonprofit boards, including the Catholic charities, uh, the Padua Franciscan high school, um, and, and, and others. Um, he's a dude that just gives, he just is so selfless that it makes me want to be more selfless. Um, and it's one of the reasons, you know, if you believe that you are the average of the people that you surround yourself with, I keep Paul in that group to up my game, right? My giving game. Um, uh, just very, very, um, giving, right? Um, it's also brilliant. Um, gr- we have great conversations every time we talk. And so it's a no brainer for me to ask Paul to have one with me on the podcast. So go to gertzberglaw.com. What you'll find there is a link to a new newsletter that we just, um, started. It's really cool. It's called Alex's insider fix. And, uh, every one to two weeks, we haven't decided yet. We are going to Uh, put out there to the universe three hacks, an entrepreneurial hack, a legal hack, and a random personal whatever hack. But all are intended to be actionable and useful and interesting and ways to make your life easier, right? Things that have worked for me, for our law firm, for our people there. Um, And so um, subscribe to that. It's really cool. We've gotten great feedback. So go, go to gertzberglaw.com and subscribe to the blog. And then if there's a separate link there, I think we're still working this out, but I I'm sure there's going to be a link there for subscribe to the, uh, subscribe to Alex's insider fix. Get that. You're going to want that. It's good stuff. Uh, Paul and I, um, talk about a wide range of topics and issues. Obviously COVID is up there. Uh, we talk about what's happening in the, in, in, in North Royalton. We talk about, um, um, the media a lot. Um, we talk about emotional intelligence. We talk about elections. Um, it's a really good conversation. So enjoy it. Thank you for tuning in and for listening to me uh, blather incoherently for this intro. Paul, I'm sorry it was such a ridiculous intro, but hopefully it was entertaining for you uh, and for uh, the rest of your family that's listening right now Um, and for everyone else. Folks, I appreciate you. Thank you for listening and for giving us your time, and uh, I hope you like it. I think you will. Bye. Councilman Paul Marnicek, ladies and gentlemen. I got promoted. Council president. Council president. Is that, is, uh, um, people, when, when, when the, the, the good citizens of North Royalton come off the street and they see you, Mm -hmm. uh, do they refer to you as councilman or council president? I prefer, I prefer Paul. 
Paul. <laughs> I because I, I mean it's it's the same people I go to church with or sure. see in Giant Eagle. You know, I'm not. It's it's still me. I know, but like I I, I find that um, that extra um, going out of your way to give respect. You know, you earn that title. You ran for it. You, this is your third term or second term uh, as council president. As councilman. So this, so I think what you're asking is, I've successfully been elected six times. Oh, jeez, oh, so it was five, it, yeah, five two-year terms as the Ward Four member of council, and I'm starting my first four-year term as president. Of council. I would insist that people call me councilman or council president, right? You know, there was a guy, a great actor named Lawrence Olivier. I've heard of him, and uh, his, I think his full title was Baron von the Queen had, and he said, just call me Larry, and. Do you like the movie Spinal Tap? I do. It's been a while. You know one of the gentlemen in that is English nobility. That's right. You'd never know it. That's you'd true. Never, you'd, unless you go on his Wikipedia page, you would just think, oh, he's Christopher, oh, he's Christopher Guest. Oh, that's right. That's who it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Not Lord Hayden Guest, fourth baron of something. Jamie Lee Curtis is actually Lady Hayden That's right. Guest. You have you you refer to me as counselor, even though you and I are friends, and I appreciate I do. that. I, do. I feel like that. Um, you know, it's like the Esquire at the end of the name. I think is a little pompous, and I don't mind telling lawyers that. But I like it when people say a counselor. I think okay. it's fun. I think okay. it's like it's a cool little. You know, yeah, I earned it. I've been doing it for twenty years. Yeah, counselor is good. I'm going to call you a uh, councilman every time I see you. Um, okay, but. Do people in council, do they say Mr. President? Like it, 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 in formal proceedings. In, I'm sorry, did you informal or informal? In space, formal proceedings of council, mm -hmm. are you referred to as Mr. President? Correct. And then I would refer to them as councilwoman or councilman. Okay. Because if, like, if, if we're on the record, we, we do it. But before and after the meeting, it's, hey, Paul. What is the, um, what is the, hottest button issue that the you know never shying away from controversy here at best podcast ever Paul. Best podcast ever the most uh uh controversial hot button issue in the hallowed council halls of the city of north Royal, or is it the village the village of north Royal? city in the city of north About Royalty. Thirty-one thousand residents okay city yeah what's the in uh, fact we just celebrated our 200th anniversary in 2018 we buried a uh time capsule happy birthday north Royalty. Happy birthday we had a we had a year-long celebration What's getting everyone's cackles up right now over there? You know, it's always going to be infrastructure, okay. stormwater. Uh, is my trash getting picked up? Is my recycling getting picked up? But right now, it's how things are reopening. Mm. Oh, so when are the tennis courts going to? It's it, it's those little everyday things. Yeah. When are the tennis courts reopening? We just reopened the um, playground. One of the things we waited for was we sprayed it with weaving. The city sprayed it yeah. with MicroShield 360. They're not a sponsor, but they should be MicroShield 360 uh, to provide a like a year long barrier against infection. So it's it's or, or um, okay. germs. Right. So it's, it's those kind of things. How do we right now? How do we get back to the pre COVID? At what pace? What still needs to be closed? Okay. Yeah. What's able to be reopened? Uh, Paul, I. Uh... Uh, ordinarily, in the hundred, almost thirty episodes of best podcast ever, uh, I believe you've been a guest twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ordinarily, mm -hmm. um, I will carve out a good thirty minutes, and I will um, get with our crack research department. We will learn everything we need to know about our guest. All right. I will uh, go through a detailed, exhaustive. Uh, list of questions and and put them together to really put together the the, the, the finest uh, hour of entertainment and information that I can for our listeners. But I didn't do that today. Do you want to know why? I would love to know why. Because when you come here, yeah, when you're when you and I meet, or maybe not for a podcast, but even um, I get a for jam lunch. or lunch, right? Yeah. Oh, whatever. whatever. I get such a joy out of. Um, pulling the threads of curiosity, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and intellect, mm -hmm. and 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 and, I, and that's what I want to do here. So I've got my questions. Sure, I've got them here. Let's see what you got. But I, no, but I, I what I'm saying is I don't. I I, I really just want to I just want to pick your brain. All right, right. Uh, uh. So so here, 
um, lately, call it in the last couple months, uh, what have you been most curious about? What has fascinated you? It's a great question. How quick businesses were able to mobilize mm. and, and how some people, let's say, were able to, to switch to working from home Ooh. seamlessly yeah. overnight. And others, there's been these interesting challenges. So I would say, and I know it's not related to me being a member of city council, but that just watching how some individuals didn't miss a beat, did not miss a beat. And businesses that for years had resisted letting people, oh, work from home or, or had to, and how quick they had to do it, and they found a way to do it. I mean, I'll take Greater Cleveland Partnership in the span of, I think, I don't know, two, three days. Oh, sorry. Two, three days, building was closed, but we had to keep working. Okay, so... Quickly figure out, okay, if you need something technology-wise from the IT department, here's how you're going to get it. But the building shut down. And just how... Yeah. Are you using, but, 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 yeah. but there's some industries that they can't do that. You know, if you're in manufacturing, you can't say, oh, take this huge drill press home and we'll send you the raw materials. So that's just been interesting how some businesses, mm -hmm. they had to. And businesses that couldn't, well, how do they quickly get the health or the environmental things they need to stay open? because they can't go remote. Are you using your NPR voice on purpose right now? No, I just didn't want to yell. That was that was like solid whispering. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. I have found that when I get excited, I get louder. I do too. And yeah. I'm trying to consciously be aware of that fact yeah. and not blow out my own eardrums because now I can hear myself in my head in the, in the headphones. Oh, yeah, and, and by the way- Which I, which I like being able to do. I'm fine can, with it. You can um, make your- uh, ears quieter by turning this knob right here. No, I'm all right. um, let me give you, I, I too, I share that fascination. I, mm -hmm. I've been, I've been downright bewildered mm -hmm. at how so many businesses didn't skip a beat mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I will give you the flip side of that coin though, because I've become acutely aware of it more and more as every day passes. Um, I've become very aware and um, despondent, really, at how the disparity um, among industries, mm -hmm. how different industries have been affected. Restaurants killed, yeah. killed, right? Mm -hmm. um, entertainers, live event people, right? I mean, you're a councilman and you work for this great organization, mm -hmm. right? Greater Cleveland Partnership. I've got a law firm here. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know about you. I've been busier than I've ever been in my entire life. You, mm -hmm. you guys probably too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, at the Greater Cleveland Partnership. Well, yeah, and at council. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. you, you had no. Sh a, neither of us have missed a paycheck. Right. Mm -hmm. B, neither of us have been want for work. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, but another thing to look at is both you and I are in positions where we are the decision makers for other individuals' paychecks. True. Me, me as city council. Yep. You as the principal, yeah. What CEO, CEO yeah. of your law firm, right? So it's still that conversation of I yeah. am I am in charge of individuals' livelihoods. Um, can you imagine what it has been like um, for someone who's made their entire living off of you know like entertaining people, like a, a, a performer, right? Like a theater performer or a dancer or a comic or mm -hmm. a, a musician. Like lately, as days have gone by, I just keep getting more and more really just affected, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and I'm a huge fan of live music. I think mm -hmm. you are too, right? Mm -hmm. um, In fact, OAR, a band that I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of, um, their lead singer started doing these from home. Yeah, that's well, that's what they're all doing. Yeah, right? they, they have to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just to, I mean, it's like you work your entire mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. to get to a certain point where people show up to watch you perform and to give you money to do it. Mm -hmm. And th and that's the thing. I actually same thing for restaurant owners, although they're coming back now, right? And and, and I'll tell you yeah. um and I have a small sample size. I admit. But I think after about a week or so, many restaurants in North Royalton switched to carry out. So, mm -hmm. so they weren't dead, 
let's yeah. say they, they were still able and their margins are razor thin to begin with, yeah. but they were at least able to do some, something. Mm -hmm. And, um, there we, we passed, it's so full disclosure. We modeled, a, uh, an ordinance off of North Olmsteads, um, that allowed restaurants that had patios to be able to temporarily expand them without mm -hmm. needing to go through the usual bureaucracy because it was temporary I to wish... give them more outdoor seating to balance out what they because we know they have the they have the kitchen size mm -hmm. let's say because a lot of them they, they built these patios i believe in response some of them to 2006 2007 i think it was when smoking was outlawed or banned in establishments right. so right. like okay well we need somewhere for these individuals that still partake of smoking and then if we're in a nice geographic the way our, our lot is situated if there's a nice place to sit outside now some of them go, well, we, we have the kitchen to feed more than just our uh, patio. We have the staff to do more yeah. than just the patio. So we've allowed them. And yeah. I, like I said, we, we, we modeled it off of North Olmsted. It's brilliant. So I, to give I, them that little yeah. help. Right. Yeah, I think that the... the um, Shout out to North Olmsted, by the way. Nice Because they, they did the heavy yeah. lifting of kind of... Yeah. I really... Um, so long as there is going to be difficulty assembling crowds mm -hmm. in small spaces. Mm -hmm. I don't know when, the, I mean, sporting events, concerts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's just going to be this lingering suffering happening mm -hmm. among people who made their living that way. And my heart goes out to him, Paul. I really, you know, I, I just, um, there, there, there's the financial part of it, but there's the there's the inability to ply your trade, yeah. You know, in the way that you've mm -hmm. that you've trained for and and, mm -hmm. and 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 just dreamed about performers and you know, all of the people in art in the art world that I yeah. know, mm -hmm. um, such passion, yeah. You know, and 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 laser focus on that one goal, that brass ring that when they finally get to be on a stage, performing, people applauding. And mm -hmm. I don't know when they're going to do that again. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you're talking about the individuals that are selling out Gundery. I mean, the Q. I'm talking about all of them. Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking I'm, about all I'm wrong them. by three names now. Yeah, I'm talking I about think, the small bands. and right, it's probably those. Because the larger bands would be able to release a live album or do something on iTunes to still have some sort of revenue stream. Yeah. You're talking about the smaller ones that don't have that kind of... Um, base yet from a from a pure suffering standpoint i'm talking about all of them yeah but but from a financial suffering mm -hmm. right yeah it's going to be more the small the smaller performance mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um so your um your but friend, do, yeah. don't forget about the individuals that are in let's say the second the second ring of benefiting from those like i remember when oh, that's right when the talk that um some automotive plants we're closing. You know, this was years ago. It was, well, yeah, they're losing their job. But what are the industries that fed into that? So right. I think, you know, I'm from the Parma area. And by the old stamping, there, there were all these nice, let's say, neighborhood bars where the guys, when they would get off of their shift, they were able to go yeah. have a drink, maybe have breakfast, depending upon, I mean, they served breakfast 24 hours a day, but whatever their breakfast time was based on their shift, we'll get breakfast. Right. All those places are gone now too because yeah. the plant isn't there anymore. So, it's, so think about those people too that aren't the headliners, that aren't the names on the right. stage. You know, the gaffers, the first boys, all those things. Yeah. Um, Paul. Yeah. Um, have you given much thought as to how this thing plays out um, economy-wise, politically, historically? Um, I'm, I'm asking that facetiously because yeah. I know you have. Yeah. Um, how do you see this thing playing out? Too early to say. I think it's still, there's definitely some positives that you could find from this. You know, there's probably going to be some things when we look at in a year, were we able to now stress test whatever, I mean, or, or find some positives. But it's still too early to say because now we haven't reopened completely, right? I mean, when we're recording this, there's a process, but I think some areas mm -hmm. in the country are facing a, a, a second wave right. or, a, or an increase. So it's that. How do we get out of this? Well, there's still a, a, a good chunk of the country that thinks it's a, this is a hoax, right? I mean, there and and yeah. that that are just congregating in ways that the rest of the country thinks is totally reckless, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I I think you see, uh, I don't know, Florida keeps. But there's just, also there's also yeah. a section of the country that thinks what we're doing 
is extreme. Yeah, that's so right. There, so there is that both sides of like, right. why are you going to such extremes? Unfortunately, unfortunately, and I've, again, having never shied away from controversy, I don't mind saying this. Unfortunately, this is a time when we really needed a national response and national cohesion, and, and we had nobody at the helm to do it, in my mm -hmm. opinion. We had, mm -hmm. we, there's, there's 50 different solutions, uh, it, one mm -hmm. for each state, and mm -hmm. then within, it, within each state, there's, there's, you know, some strong leaders and some aren't, and, mm -hmm. and um, I think that that is going to be part of the legacy of the United States uh, for this pandemic, it could have been addressed better, more efficiently, more effectively, sooner, um, and it wasn't. And I think we're going to be well. That and how it just the, the general polarization. It, I keep coming back to how if I were if I were Vladimir Putin, okay, or some other. Um, oligarch or or dictator or someone who just wants absolute the, monarch yeah somebody who who is the one that the, yeah the buck really does stop yeah. there but but, yeah. but in particular one of those guys because there's a bunch of those around yeah. but but also one of those guys who just wants the u.s to go away okay right? i couldn't imagine a better scenario yeah. than one where the country can't agree on facts the one you know yeah. a scenario where they can't agree whether they're um, whether the um, scientists are right, whether um, this thing is being overblown. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine a scenario where you've got one news channel over here and, and, and a news channel over here, and both of them are extremely popular, mm -hmm. right? It's Fox over here, and it, well, mm -hmm. I guess it's everyone else. I, I was thinking of MSNBC and, the, and, and mainstream media over here, but like, the the the, me, the two media camps mm -hmm. have such strong followers, such huge uh, groups. Well, it's and, confirmation bias, isn't it? Totally, you, it's total. You, you know, you know your conclusion, yes. and you go find yes. the sources that already support so, your conclusion. Yeah, and yeah. and so you've got um, these two camps, and each one is calling the other one fake news, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If I'm Putin. I'm just going like this. I'm like, I, this yeah. couldn't have worked out better for me. Yeah. You know? Well, that's, that's any situation where you have, where you can just sit back and wait. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's probably examples in business where, where a, a third company watches two others beat each other into yeah. submission and go, we'll, we'll clean up now. Yeah. You know, so by the way, I botched my answer earlier. What I should have said was, cause I had a moment to think about it is how this has forced, let's say preconceived notions. Oh, we'd never be able to figure out how to do that. Well, now, Things mm. had to be figured out. So gone is that, well, this is how we've always done it. Now it's, we can't do it that way anymore. Yeah. And so it's to borrow Jimmy, Jimmy V, survive in advance. Yeah. Either you survive in advance or you go home and you don't. Right. Um, a little bit of a tortured analogy, but I think the value's there somewhere. Your friend, John Chamura was on this show, thanks to you for the introduction, <laughs> uh, a few episodes ago. And right at the end, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to that yet, but right at the end of that, I did. did you? Of course. Um, you are and our. By the way, the true super. Fan. If I make so, because it'll be, uh, I'll probably. So I'm guessing this will drop after the Fourth of July. Yes. So John's wife, Tara, who I've known for years as well, and H Bomb visited me yesterday and and delivered to me my Fourth of July bow tie. Is that right? It is not the one I'm wearing. This is, uh, I think, light up for autism. Okay. Um, I think, and if I'm wrong, John will probably be texting me right about now when this drops, telling me, no, it's actually this. But yeah, so they dropped off my 4th of July bow tie as well as my 4th of July pocket square. We'll make sure uh -huh. that we get a picture of it so that people can can you see will. it as they listen to you will. The, uh, the sound of your voice. At the end of his episode, yeah, we were both talking about how one potential consequence of this pandemic is that everyone will come out of it having known a small business. Oh, I, I've, I've gone through this with you, right? Um, we, I, I, I've talked to so many people about this. This is the anti-Amazon campaign, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So so the genesis of that was that call, was was the podcast with John, okay. right? And, uh, and it, so I've, I've talked to uh, the, the folks at, at Cozy and GCP about this. I've talked to a lot of other folks about this, and I'm still trying to um, f uh, move this thing forward. But I, candidly, I'm not optimistic, although I will say that Amazon has picked up on it on its own. The, the point is that um, everyone 
has known a small business that has suffered more than others, right? Everyone knows through over the last couple months, including through the race riots, that um, small businesses have really taken this giant hit, Mm -hmm. giant hit, Mm -hmm. laid people off, uh, uh, been desperate for PPP money, have to had to board up their shops during protests, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and so um, John and I were talking about um, how it would be it would be cool if the momentum of uh, of that sort of compassion for small businesses and small business owners resulted in some kind of counterweight to Amazon, mm-hmm. right? And I talked to you and, and and Megan about it. I talked to some other folks, and then just Megan the, Megan Kim, not my wife Megan. Correct. Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> you hopefully have talked to Megan, your wife, about it. Yeah. Um, but um, just the other day, I saw Amazon did something along these same lines. Really? Yeah, they created a small business hub. So Jeff Bezos listens to this? I, I, I've always assumed that, I, that he I listens to I do as well. Us. Hello, so, Jeff. Yeah, I, I, I assume that he and, and all the other power players. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, the, when, when you say, you know, the sort of the byproduct of the pandemic, when you, when you talk mm-hmm. about how, mm-hmm. you know, we are resilient, how mm-hmm. new things have come up. Like, I, I think that that kind of mm-hmm. awareness is definitely, mm-hmm. um, one of the things. And then you've got the, you've got the, um, the, uh, the George Floyd murder and you've got all of the protests that happen afterwards. I do think that there are these giant sea changes happening. I think what you're, and, and I hope nobody gets caught on the word I'm about to use extinction level event. Mm. I think you're talking about something that is so quick, unexpected and total that it completely changes, Mm -hmm. completely changes the environment. Yes. So if you think about, and I'm, Reaching back to like eighth grade science, you think about when the dinosaurs exited the stage, what was able to then thrive because the dinosaurs were no longer there. So what I'm right. saying is you're, we're at a point now where so many things that had been dominant yeah. and just been, this is what it is because it is, yeah. are now you had such a quick moment where everything changed. What now is going to fill those gaps and fill that vacuum? Well, I'll tell you something that scares the shit out of me, Paul Marnicek. Yes, Alex Kirsten. What scares the shit out of me is that it is only- Murder Hornets? July. Yeah. No. No, it's that it is July. Yeah. Right? 2020, Mm -hmm. I mean, just starting in March. If if it was January and we would have said, hey, there's going to be a global pandemic and everyone's going to go into quarantine and there's going to be race riots all Uh, within the next three months- uh, Four or five months. uh, We would have said, uh, you're smoking crack. So- Uh, I'll, right. I'll tell you a different one. Yeah. If you had told me at Christmas yeah. that I would not be in a church for Easter, mm-hmm. I'd be like, there's, right. there's, 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 right. there's no, there's, there's no way yeah. I will not, unless I'm sick right. or something totally unforeseen that I would not, that I would watch on a TV screen, right. Easter mass, I'd be like, you're just out of your mind. I mean, at this rate, the, with the year only being half over, and yeah. by the way, the November election is a big deal. You yeah. want to talk about money being mobilized, mm-hmm. um, emotion being mobilized, mm-hmm. rage. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I fear. I fear um, just given these monumental yeah. Events that have happened just to this day. I man, if aliens came down and landed in my backyard, Paul, mm-hmm. and said, "Hey, um, we're gonna, um, we're just gonna feed off of you guys now, and uh, we're gonna just, enslave hey, we're everybody." Aliens. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Well, right. Yeah. There's that too. Um, <laughs> I'd have been like, "No, yeah, that's that's kind of how this year's been going." Yeah. Right. Uh huh. I don't know, man. It's crazy. Well, and it's by bananas. the way, I, I yeah. think we kind of skipped over this too. When with with your point about the confirmation bias is. I think generations prior in America, you kind of had organizations, institutions, people that were kind of looked at as objectively purveyors of the fact. You know, you you hear the William Cronkite, you hear these individuals Mm -hmm. that they were seen as neutral. They were seen as even if you don't credible. Yeah, exactly. Even if you don't like what they're saying, it's at least unbiased. And I think with the start of CNN, you slowly had decentralized what that is. You didn't only have three, five, and eight. Now you have so many different outlets. 
I mean, how many how many different news channels are there? Then you go to YouTube, you go to Facebook, yeah. podcasts. You have all now. You can find a stream, a source that you already agree with. That's right. And boy, that's the right one. Yeah. Instead of instead of having to look at something and go, maybe this maybe this changes my beliefs and causes me to reevaluate a position. Now it's I have yeah. found, and I'm generalizing. I have found a position I agree with. Oh, you're 100 right. Therefore, that's the one I continue to listen to. Um, and that's and that's true on so many different. Right. It's not only conservative or liberal or climate change, not climate change, vaccine, right. anti-vaccine. See, and the thing of it is too, you right? Know? Is ordinarily, um, if we weren't, you know, living in in just I don't know, it seems like cuckoo times. We, I, I I'd like to think that that folks like like you and I would welcome the diversity of opinion would welcome yeah. additional voices yeah more news channels you know yeah but but the problem that we've got now is that um, emotions turn into actions mm -hmm. um, there is a um, there there is a president who is a like a climate change denier mm -hmm. and a, like everything is fake news if it's mm -hmm. against him you know mm -hmm. um, and then you've got people who listen and then they send mail bombs mm -hmm. uh, as a result to mm -hmm. congressmen or oh man Paul there is this amazing documentary I just watched on HBO and it's called um, I think it's called After Truth or it's about the concept of fake news, mm -hmm. right? Um, and do you remember after the 2016 election when everyone, uh, there was there was this rumor going around about how Hillary and John Podesta had this um, child, si yeah. Yeah. A, a, a dude got an AK-47 yeah. and walked through there looking for- all The tunnels or whatever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of shit that happens now, Yeah. right? I don't mind people saying um, uh, there's- I, I don't mind that there's a diversity of opinion. I mind that there are crazy people Yeah, who, but you know, some things yeah. I would say in this, in this crazy time- Get closer to the mic. Though. Okay. In this crazy yeah. time, I think there are some things that have happened that we probably never would have thought. NASCAR banned the Confederate flag. I mean, that that's probably something that yeah. made sense to do for a while. Yeah. But now they had the momentum to actually do it. Right. So there's there's we're probably gonna yeah. find some things that came out of this that are positive. Well, that's I mean, to you your know? point, these extinction level events, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's it it was it was a it was a horrible, horrible, horrible yeah, murder that happened mm -hmm. over eight and a half minutes, mm -hmm. um, and then another uh, one after that, and all the ones that happened before that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Confederate statues are are getting mm -hmm. are torn down left and right, and pe and and um, look, I mean, I wear my politics on my sleeve, so it doesn't. I I I, I don't I don't mind saying it, but um, it, it it is long overdue. But before the voices against such things mm -hmm. were said were were and 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 that was the end of the conversation right right um now there are you know the well what about all lives matter camp right mm -hmm. and the black lives matter people listen talk back and then the statues come down mm -hmm. you know what i mean so mm -hmm. there is a definitely this this sea change happening and it's mm -hmm. palpable mm -hmm. you can see it i love it yeah um if you see if one you, one yeah. thing I, I also hope that maybe this breaks the log jam and maybe this is me being Pollyanna ish it breaks the log jam that we finally fix public school funding in Ohio. And I own I don't know a lot about the topic, but I know the system has been declared unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. So I look at it as is that a way to maybe rip from the root some of these problems when it comes to how depending upon where you live, because of this broken public school funding model, y y you have a much harder time. Yeah. So is this, does it now have the momentum to maybe, okay, we got to fix this. We know it's, we know it's unconstitutional. The The state of Ohio's uh, state Supreme Court is founded unconstitutional, but how do we actually fix it now? Well, Paul, I've been telling you for a long time that you will um, outgrow your office very quickly and start <laughs> running for statewide and nationwide uh, positions. And I fully expect you, you to tackle that issue head Thank on um, at some point. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know enough about it either. Well, um, I think, and I know nobody tells you what to do, but I think you may want to be surprised, Paul. You may want to look at finding. In, I mean, it's a topic that is meaty, is complex, and I think. Yeah. I would suggest. I don't know who it is. Um, I'm gonna throw a name out because I know it's somebody who who I have a huge amount of respect for his intellectual prowess. It's a gentleman named State Representative Kent Smith. Um, he is ABD all but dissertation, I think, for a PhD in urban or ec- he's really smart. He's okay. he's ABD something. Uh, he was a 12 year member of Euclid's school board. Uh, he went to Euclid. And he's currently in his, I don't know, third or fourth term, I think, in the state house. And he's probably somebody who um, would be able to give you an idea of the topic. Plus, uh, I know you like artists as well. Um, he wrote a book. I used to share an office with him at the county prosecutor's office when we both worked there for the Ohio Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. But he might be somebody um, uh-huh. that, could, that could kind of guide you in the in the uh, topic that is public school funding, I I got a feeling you're going to introduce me to uh, State Senator S- Kent Smith. Is it? Uh, and every the- time I go back to Kent State, uh, Kent Smith has a standing order. If I ever see any logo to parallel at Kent State that just says Kent, he uh, says buy it. Whatever whatever it is, Paul, yeah. buy it, and I'll and tell me how much I owe you. Uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah I, 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 this would be a good conversation. Actually, I'd like to get, I'd like to educate myself more on that issue. Yeah. And even if he's not on the um, podcast, even if you just grab a bite with him and yeah. just sit down and pick his brain, he's somebody that really understands the issue because it's something he's passionate about. And I think you would just enjoy, and you, you, you can cut this if I babble too long no, about, no, it's about fine. Kent, but I think he's someone you'd really enjoy getting to know a little better. Um, Paul. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is your favorite time period in history? Um, oh. If you could, if you could. Of all of human history or just. I mean, yes. All not, of human history. But, but let not me to jump on you, but narrow, narrow, all of human history, all of human history, all two million years of it. Correct. Oh boy. But um, for purposes of um, living in. Oh, wait, wait, wait. F- like, so, so you would live there okay. for a year. Okay. Right. Uh, so with everything that comes with that. Um, you, well, if, as a what am I, am I upper middle? Am I, am I, uh, like, like, you are a, like if I say the middle ages, am I, uh, am I a, a surf at a fiefdom or am I in the court of Henry the eighth? You are, you are a protected curiosity seeker. Uh, you, you, I can, I can guarantee that while so like you are Dr. Who. Yeah. Yeah. You're okay. like a time traveler. I, I, I drop in. Correct. Okay. Um, well, so if we, of course, so I, and, and, I, and I think you've done this on something like which historical person would you want to meet excluding like a religious figure? Cor- uh, correct. Obviously, if I could go to the time of Christ. Yeah. And I mean, or those, I mean, so if, if we take out that obvious one of if I'd be able to have the ability to meet sure. Christ, of course, I'd want to meet Christ. Yeah. Um, go back. Um, I, you know, I, I would, and I would probably say, It'd probably be ancient Greece. Ooh, I like it. No, no, you asked me my favorite time. Yeah, it'd probably be ancient Greece because that's where these individuals that over the years we've all, I mean, we've, we've read Plato, we've read mm. Aristotle, we've read Socrates. If I could go back and actually meet them yeah. and because then you're getting it from the source. Yeah. Then it's not however many thousands of years and this is what our interpretation is. So it'd probably be those those foundational periods. Yeah. Probably. I think for me, it would be the Renaissance. I think, okay. that, I think that I would like to have, um, you want to see David being, being carved. Yeah. And, 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 um, and, and Leonardo da Vinci actually painting the last supper, those kind of these things that are now iconic. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, and, and I, I really, <clears throat> I like the iconoclasm that's happening at that time. I like, I like that everybody was challenging norms, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're coming out of the middle ages and you know, they're, and, and Galileo is is there and, and, um, it's just, I, I really like the rebirth aspect of Mm -hmm. the Renaissance a lot. Um, the other is, uh, 
I'm re I'm, I'm reading right now the biography of John D. Rockefeller by Ron Chernow. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. You know where he's buried? Yeah, over here, Lakeview, right? That's right. I gotta go. What I, you know, what I'm gonna do actually after this? It's actually you'd love it because you're a sort of a Cleveland historian kind of a dude, and you read this book and um, they're talking about what downtown was and yeah. Millionaire's Row and all yep. that. Yep. When I'm done with this book, I'm gonna go back and make myself a little map of everything that mm-hmm. John D used to used to see when he was walking up so and down the street. If, yeah. if, I, if I can name drop another person, um, and I know you're on Twitter, but Chris Ronane over at University Circle has been posting as of late a lot of interesting historical photos, anniversaries. So mm-hmm. he's, he's a good follow, and he's probably somebody who uh, I, got, I got the opportunity to go on a bus tour where he led the bus tour, and it was just him like, and over here was this, and, and, and over here was this, because he's, he's lived it for so long. Yeah. So he's probably somebody you'd enjoy. Um, what... Can you think of an assumption, Paul, that you had for a long time that you later found to be totally bullshit? Assumption I had later wasn't true. Um, no, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I, I, I'm sure there is one, and I'm of course skipping over the, you know, my dad's the strongest man in the world. Uh-huh. I mean, of course those, yeah. you know, um. Well, let me let me uh, let me guide you, right? So, six terms as a, a, a council person. Uh-huh. So, how many years is that? Uh, well, I'm entering, I guess, my eleventh year because I served. All right, so five, so two so years, yeah, eleventh year. Imagine your first year in council, eleven mm-hmm. years ago, and what you expected of people of of city government. Yeah. Um, and now you've got the benefit of of eleven years of hindsight, right? Uh, what, what do you know now that you didn't know then? Not that- everything can be fixed overnight. Some things, and by the way, yeah. sometimes there, sometimes despite best efforts, it's not a problem that can necessarily be fixed hmm. without a lot, you know, not, not, sometimes the real answer is, I'm sorry, no, no can be a valid answer. You can't fix everything for everyone. Yeah. Is that because of just the law of, of scarce resources? We can fix it, but then we can't be talking about this stuff over here for the next 10 years. So I'll use an example, let's say. Let's say you have two neighbors, they have a disagreement, mm-hmm. and we have a previous mayor that would say you can't legislate common sense. So your neighbor might be doing something that you don't like, that doesn't yeah. make sense, but that doesn't necessarily mean the city can get them to change it. So are they breaking the law? No. I can go talk to the neighbor and I have and see if I could appeal to them to do something different, but I don't have, you know, if you use a carrot and a stick analogy, I can use the carrot, hey, it would be nice, be a good neighbor, da 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 da. I don't have a stick to say, and if you don't, you're violating North Royalton codified ordinance section, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I've been asked, well, am I am, am I breaking an ordinance? Am I breaking a zoning rule? No. Okay, well then I'll 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 probably keep doing it. So it's it's that I'm not yeah. as persuasive as I hope. You know, there's sometimes me being unable to get a change isn't the fact that I'm not persuasive or I couldn't find the line right. of argument or appeal to them. It's just they will not do it, and I can't make them. Um, I'm far less powerful than I thought I would be, and and I don't mean that facetiously. I'm saying yeah. not everything can be fixed. Yeah. Um, I um was on the board of my homeowners association. You poor thing. Which All the is, which is a, tiny, the pain. Ah. a tiny <laughs> microcosm of what you go through as city council person yeah. or president. Yeah. Um, uh, what drove me bananas yeah. on there is how um, what was clearly a monumentally important issue to a particular homeowner, Mm -hmm. they couldn't see how from a macro level, that was not something that we had to, that we could possibly drop what we were doing to then haul their neighbor in here and, 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 and solve their problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but which to them was a life or death situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's just like a pothole. Yeah. If you hit the same pothole every day, that is the most important issue to you. Correct. So that drove me uh, crazy. Mm -hmm. How often do you see that? Is that like every council meeting for you? Like, do you, are you constantly having to exercise extreme emotional intelligence in helping people understand, I would love to wave a magic wand and help you right now, but this is just not a citywide priority. So if, if we're, so I guess we're, we're talking about a pre COVID reality because mm. my answer is that's more when I, when we, when you go to their home, when I say, I let me come out and see what it is you're experiencing. Oh, you, so, were, you used to do that? I still do. Is that right? When, when COVID, yeah. yeah. When, 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 oh, wow. when COVID, yeah, I would go, um, I would ride my bicycle sometimes. I'm not kidding. I would ride my bicycle over to their house. Let me see what's going on. Uh, take some photos, to put an action form in or do that kind of stuff. But sometimes it is, yeah, I see your point, but... But, but also sometimes it's, well, let me go talk to your neighbor. Yeah. Have you gone, have you talked to your neighbor? No, I don't want the conflict. Okay, well, let me go talk to them and see maybe there's a, maybe they just need to be asked. You know, maybe for years you've wondered, why don't they do this? Maybe yeah. just, just ask them or, I'll, or I'll, I'll go do it. I don't mind getting yelled at. I'll go do it. Paul Marnicek for president, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> of city council. Marnicek 2028. Paul, um, that's amazing that you t took such personal interest in, in, in people's problems so as to go to their house and go visit their neighbors. Um, but the other, the other part of that is that, um, do you, did you find as I did? And again, at the HOA level, that's such a small thing, but I actually, but I find it to be true with organizations that I, that I run or that I sit on the board of. Do you, do you find that a lot of times people just need to vent? Yeah. People just need to feel oh, like yeah. they've had their day in court. Right. I mean, do you just kind of uh, you do you place a lot of weight on just giving people that sort of outlet? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and sometimes it is. Sometimes it's just they're frustrated and they want somebody to listen. Yeah. And it's their soft power of and you're going to listen to me for five minutes, for 10 right. minutes, or right. I'm going to send you a couple emails. Absolutely. And you know what? Sometimes that's all they need. Yeah. They're, they are mad about this. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've had people call me and they're mad potentially about the bus routes for the school district. Now we have a great school district, but they're mad. Why don't they, or right. why don't they go in this? Or, you know, today my garbage pickup was three hours later than it normally is. Okay. And the garbage was still out there when I got home. Okay. Did it get picked up? Yeah, but I don't understand that. And that's like, okay, yeah. feel feel free. You know, you need you need to burn off. Just like sometimes physically, people need to go to the. I just need to run it. I just need to go to the gym. I need to work out a little bit. Sometimes that maybe they emotionally just need a little bit of exercise. Yeah, I'm your Huckleberry. Uh, are you ready for the lightning round? Already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's uh, um, we can talk way longer. But not today. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got a thing. It's a no long problem. story. No problem. Um, you you always have. You know, I keep I yeah. keep um, hoping that I've conveyed enough to you that you have a permanent seat here, Paul, for every podcast. <laughs> right? You can be a guest co-host with me. I appreciate. Uh, you it. come back anytime. I appreciate you have an, it. Oh, that door is always <laughs> open for our super. I love fan, it. I love it. Right, and my favorite city councilman. Uh, all right, here here we go. Ready? Yeah. The non-religious book or author that you've read recently that has given you the most mileage in your life? Non-religious book or author? Non-religious. The non-religious part makes it tough. You read a lot of religious stuff. No, because the, the, the non-religious stuff I read is usually biographies. Mm. I, I really enjoy... Well, that works. So pick one. I use this to build my reading list, by the way. Okay. I would suggest um, Indomitable Will. Oof. Are you like, familiar with it? No, I like it already, though. Indomitable Will. Title. And I, if I'm butchering the words, so be it. I think the reason I butcher the words may come up in a, in, in a, in a later lightning round question. Um, um, by 
And hopefully you can insert the guy's name because I forget the author's name. Um, Don't worry about it. Indomitable the, Will's the good general, it's, it's about LBJ, President Lyndon Baines Johnson, and it's written by the former- Is it Peter Carroll's book? For, uh, no. You're thinking of Robert Carroll. Robert Carroll, that's and it. And his is uh, Passage of Power. It's a six or seven volume series. Yeah. This one is just Indomitable Will. And um, one of the things I like about it is it really talks about the year 1964 from a legislate, how much LBJ, because yeah. you had somebody who could take advantage. And mm. I feel terrible talking about the assassination of a man as an adva- as a, as, a, right. as an opportunity. But he leveraged but it. But LBJ saw a moment in American culture when he was able to get a number of things done. Um, but Pat, right. and, look da- that and it's, it's exquisitely researched. Yeah. Um, it is... It is beautiful because it really, it takes a balanced look at a man who, depending upon when in history you are, the opinion of LBJ, and he is such a, uh, I think there's a quote in there, or maybe I heard it because I've listened to some of his, I can't, I can't, I can't think of the guy's name, his, um, like when he was on a book tour, he did a lot of like speaking things. Was it John Meacham? No, uh, it's not. When we pause, I will look All it right. up on my phone. But but what I'm saying is, yeah. that I, I think he says something like, excluding for like shades of gray, there are as many opinions of LBJ as there are people that knew him. Mm-hmm. He was just such a multifaceted. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that. Um, yeah. I think that anytime you can read a, like a, um, a presidential biography, mm-hmm. f- not for every president, but for like you know your mm-hmm. your top like ten to fifteen most influential ones, right? Yeah. Th- you're gonna get some amazing stories there. And, and by the way, and lessons. Yeah. When I was in grade school, I went to the Cuyahoga County Public Library, and I forget the series, but I read a presidential biography. These, I mean, the little like you know yeah. starter ones on every president. Did you? And I, I'd put them on my bed, and I'd put them in numerical yeah. order, and I'd read them all. And that, so I loved reading. But yeah, I did that. Uh, so I can, I can name them all. I'm not bragging, but I can name well, them all. I, no, I believe you. Um, yeah. Uh, you are a professional boxer. Okay. What song is playing as Welcome you enter to the, the jungle? Ring? Oh, didn't even wait for me to finish. You I knew, knew what it was your, because to, it's, I love it. it's and and by the way, um, Slate had a podcast where they talked about that was your your strutting song. Uh-huh. I think it's a little different. Like when you're out, you know, strutting or walking, what song do you want playing in your head? And they called it their strutting song. Uh, is that your strutting song? Mine, mine would be uh, no. It's not. It's 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 actually the first. It's it's. I knew that question was coming, uh-huh. so I had to, I had some time to think about it. But because you're talking, because the purpose. Of a, and by the way, I want to tell you my second place finisher yeah. and children of the eighties like me yeah. would appreciate this. It's Hulk Hogan's theme music. What, uh, Hulk, the wrestler Hulk no, Hogan? No, I know, but what, was it like a recognizable song? Like a, like an well, Tiger kind of thing? from the eighties knows. Yeah. Or, or something like that. I, I would pick my favorite pro wrestlers theme music. Okay. Interesting. Cause it would be, there'd be a lot of like, yeah. or if, if you look them up, the ultimate warrior, cause you want something where those first notes, yeah. you know what it right, is. Right. You don't want to sound like, ah, I think I know this song. But yeah, second place was Hulk Hogan's WWF entrance yeah. music. I think my strutting song would be Staying Alive by the Bee Gees, though. <laughs> well, like John Travolta. I mean, I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Uh, your current habit or routine since last we spoke. Yeah. From which you are getting the most traction. Making lists. Interesting. And I'll tell you why. I love it. The personal, the professional, and the council, Paul, all now reside at the same place like 24 hours a day. So you remember earlier when I asked you what's an assumption you had for a long time that you later found out to be totally wrong? Mm-hmm. What's a misconception that people have had about you that you proved to them was wrong about you? Well, in what time period? Ever. Since Th- you were born. That I'd, that I'd be an effective member of council. I mean, I, you know, I, I was... Did you have doubters? Of course. I had uh, 547 people or so that voted against me in my first race. Absolutely. Well... That, and it, that, that somebody who was a renter did not grow up in the community, mm. did not go to school in the community, could be an effective member of council. 
I hope I showed in my 10 years as the Ward 4 member of council that I, that I was effective. Have any of your, uh, you, you've ran five times now, six, six times? Six. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of those were opposed? Two. Did if e you count the first one where I was the challenger. Were either of those two times, uh, did it get ugly at any point? I, no. No, I wouldn't say it did. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. <clears throat> I've often thought about running for office. I think but you should. No, I'm not going to. You should. I'm not going to. I'll tell you why. Um, I, uh, I appreciate it. Is this going to be the preconceived notion that you eventually realized was wrong? Why you shouldn't run for office? No, no. Um, the reason I'm never going to run for office is because um, the um, I don't have as thick a skin. For so In my case, it will get ugly. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You, um, I, I have as an attorney, okay, right, um, and as a very opinionated person, made a fair amount of enemies. Okay, um, and uh, it will definitely get ugly. Um, um, and I don't have as thick a skin as I think you need to run for public office. And nor and I don't know that I have the emotional intelligence to not to not respond or react okay. when things got ugly. Um, I love the battle of litigation. I love the bat, but 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 what I love about it is it's it's one time and then I go home, right? It's a trial. It's it's yeah. a it's a piece of litigation that's going to be over, uh, at, you know. But the 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 enemies arrayed against you, right? In in, in a long, mm -hmm. very personal, very emotional, clearly defined roles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. I I just um. I think plus I I do I, one thing I love about you Paul is how how deeply you feel the need to help other people. I, I like your 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 sense of civic duty isn't just a um a passing thing. I mean you have a like you feel it in your bones, mm -hmm. you know. Um I do too, but I am convinced that I can do more um without making myself okay. a public target. Okay. Then you know what I mean. I understand um, your point, and I guess maybe I should also say I hope you remain civically engaged. And and you're, you're, well, I will. And yeah, you're, just... you're probably right. Not everybody is meant to run for office. Yeah, but I I think that there has never been as important a time as there is now for good people to be engaged. Well, you're a hundred percent right. What I what I wish one thing that I think um, I'd like to put more of my energy and time into is reforming the campaign system. Right. Because I think it does discourage a lot of people from like, I mean, I'm not necessarily saying I am a good I would be a good political leader, but I think that there are a lot of people who view campaigns, mm -hmm. the need to solicit money. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the need to pat big donors on the back and, mm -hmm. and, and, and make these unwritten, unspoken promises to them, often not unwritten, very written, very spoken. But. Um, campaign finance and just the dirtiness of it, mm -hmm. right, is so unappealing that good people are not running. Well, I'll tell you one potential solution, and I think I have this right, is I believe in some countries the campaign season is clearly defined and shorter. Yeah. I think in the UK, for example, I think it's a six week period. Yeah. I don't think you can campaign outside of that six week and i th yeah. think and i've never run for judge you'd be a good judge um i think if you were going to run for judge it's again it's a clearly defined window of time when you're able to be a judicial yeah. candidate you can't like you couldn't announce i'm running for what do you live in Jaga county yeah i'm running for Jaga county common pleas in 2026 right. you can't do that now you have to yeah. wait until i think I don't know, end of 2025, early 2026. Right. That might get to the... the and, that, and, and, and by the way, another thing, and I've experienced this on a much, much, much lower level, is change the length of terms, potentially. Because right now you have a member of Congress yeah. that is a candidate that only has a, a two-year term. If you, if you change the length of the term, so maybe... Because think about that. That means your, your member of Congress, David Joyce, yeah. is a candidate every other summer. That yeah. may lead to more of a permanent, and I'm not speaking of Congressman Joyce specifically, I'm just saying as a structure, 
that may lead to a more permanent campaign stance because you're always you're all, or right. every other summer that's right. you're on the ballot. Like this summer is the this summer will be the first next I'm sorry. Next summer, 2021 will be the first summer I haven't I know what I'm trying to say is 2021 will be the first time for two summers in a row I haven't been a candidate for office since 2008. And I'm looking forward to right. the free. I mean, the, yeah, it's it's exhausting. I don't it, mind being on the ballot, but what I'm getting at is you're talking about a, a procedural thing. Yeah. Maybe you end the constant yeah. campaign cycle. Um, Maybe. Did I, tell you, did I ever tell you about my idea for turning um, uh, campaigns into reality shows? I ever tell you this? No. This is, this is, I, I'm convinced that this this will create the first true meritocracy in America, right? Yeah, reality show people think is it's like ridiculous, <laughs> but but hear me out for a All second, right. right? Take two candidates, yeah, right. Strip them of any party affiliation, right? right. So they they have to run as independents. All okay, right. find an office for them to run in. Put the camera on them for a month, right? Okay. They got to agree that okay. they will be followed everywhere outside of the bathroom for like a month, right? And maybe some private family time too. And then you put them in real life situations, right? Strike, pandemic, nuclear fallout, uh, whatever, yeah. trade negotiations. Simulations. Right? Yeah, bring actors in, mm -hmm. right? But you put them in real life situations and for um, a month, people get to see them How react. react. Mm -hmm. No buying ads, no sound bites, no campaigns to run. It is pure action and decision making under pressure. Right? The who's the, who's the director? No, uh, well, who's the? I mean, I that's don't know. Yeah, 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 Oliver yeah. Stone. I don't know. Yeah, oh. <laughs> somebody, somebody who can really yeah. po like push buttons. You know, but but think about that. It's the it's like the Ken, first Ken Burns. Yeah, there you go. But it's the, I think it's the first true meritocracy because you have to only judge them based on their actual merit in mm -hmm. that situation not based on something they did a long time ago not some some stupid DUI they got you know just but just yeah I, I know what you mean I'm you're, telling you. you're talking Book about that. well you <laughs> and maybe what you're maybe what an, a middle ground would be is um I don't know what's happening with this feedback. Mm. Go ahead, keep talking. Having uh, having it be more substantive questions. Yeah, more substantive questions about what lay out a plan. Right. And actually, let's let's really dig into yeah. what you're proposing. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, all By right. the way, an another another yeah. thing that I think you would maybe enjoy is um, getting rid of gerrymandering. Oh, for sure. I think that. Yeah. Well, know, that's part of that. That would be part of campaign reform too. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think that our elect, there are our system for choosing our leaders is just jacked up mm -hmm. in so many ways. The money in it, the marketing in it, mm -hmm. uh, the gerrymandering. It, I mean, and and frankly, I don't know. Did you look at the plan? I, I told you there was something I was going to ask you about. Did you look at it? It's okay if you didn't. I, I, I forgot to remind you. But oh. one of the, I think one of, so you're you're definitely talking about a structural thing. You're not saying, oh, the candidates we have, oh, they're terrible. You're talking about the structure and process. Correct. I, the electoral college, I think is one structure that unfortunately has not been allowed to evolve. And I think that's because the number of members of the U.S. House of Representatives has been capped at 435 mm. uh, since the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And so the point I'm making is now you're just redistributing. Instead of saying X number of people constitutes an elected uh, a member of Congress. So California, if you have that, what we've been doing now is taking the nation's population, dividing it by 435 and apportioning it that way. Yeah. Which means you have held the number of electoral votes available to, I think, 540. Even as the country has grown, you still have the same number of electoral votes. Right. So that might be another structural thing to look at. Of If we're going to have the Electoral College, yeah. how has it been allowed to evolve in the last 100, 110, 115 right. years since the House number was capped? 
Uh, do you maybe? Think, yeah, maybe. No, I, I think that I think you 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 got to look everywhere. Unfortunately, the uh, the amount of change that our um, system for electing our leaders requires is um, it's wholesale change. It's 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 it, you know mm -hmm. it's almost like let's start over, right? Let's let's hold on to a few constitutional principles and um, the the interpretation of the constitution. Although I think that the the um, the money in politics decision was just dead wrong. Citizens so, United. Yeah. That, so mm -hmm. that one, that one's got to go. But um, yeah, I think it, it requires such wholesale change that, that it just can't happen. But I do think it will be chipped away at, you know, I mean, one thing I've been saying through this whole like Black Lives Matter um, and, uh, and and racial injustice, um, uh, criminal justice reform uproar lately to all of my like ultra conservative friends is listen, history does move in one direction, mm -hmm. not smoothly. Mm -hmm. There are ups and downs. We take two steps back, but everything that we're doing right now, we will look back 50 years from now and look at this moment right here, the way we think now about Jim Crow, right? The way we look back at Martin Luther King's time mm -hmm. and um, uh, Rosa Parks' time. That is how we are gonna the w the arguments that people are making now about um, uh, you know the Confederacy um, and flags um, and statues. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. monuments. Mm -hmm. If you if you look back through history, right, there has always been someone on the other side of progress mm -hmm. there's always been someone on the other side of abolitionists there were all there was somebody yeah. on the other side of um the civil rights movement ever since then right well, and i there, think i think it, i mean yeah. you're also point there's, there's there's always somebody that history shows was on the wrong side correct or on the but in the end losing, in yeah. the end mm -hmm. right since um 1600 i or or what what i think they just said that like the first They've been celebrating, not celebrating, but like um, the, the slavery first came to America in like the, was it like the 1580s or something like that? Like around 1600, something like that, right? From that first day, okay, civil rights has moved slowly in one direction and that is progress and that is more overall. civil rights overall it loses ground every now and then but Correct. there's always yeah. a few steps backwards but eventually <clears throat> we mm -hmm. move forward and that's not just for minorities that's for women mm -hmm. i guess they were my considered minorities right um uh racial minorities uh um gender minorities um lgbtq minorities yeah. progress moves forward mm -hmm. always right so um in this I, country there's other countries that we've probably seen. I guess that's true. You know, yeah, I mean, and I, I, I'm, I guess I, I, right. I only feel competent to speak about like American history, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and even then, in, in, generally incompetent. But, uh, but, and I forget why we start. Why what got me on the soapbox just now? But um, I do think that that is the direction we're going in, yeah. and we will get there, and mm -hmm. it'll just take time. Um, I yeah, I agree, and it's it's. You know, we are only here for a brief window. Yeah. Like we may only move the proverbial ball an inch on a hundred yard field. Yeah. But is it the inch from our goal line or is it the inch that puts it in the other goal line? Right. To torch. And yes, I'm missing the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. So I mean, but, but that's yeah. what I'm getting at is we, it, it, we're all going to keep moving it incrementally Correct. forward. We don't know where we're at on the continuum. I remember why I, why I got on. I stalled long enough for you. No, no, no. It's be, thank you. You're welcome. Um, it's because when we talk about um, electoral changes, yeah. gerrymandering changes, right? Yeah. We will, I think, eventually get there, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's going to take a lot of time. It won't be that wholesale ground up kind of change, unless there's like a real revolution. Like if Trump, I could see how. You know, I was imagining a scenario where, um, you know, Trump gets, um, it vote, it loses the election. He's already saying it's going to be the most rigged thing mm -hmm. in history, right? But he loses. He doesn't uh, leave. Okay. And there is like a, a real, you know, like almost violent mm -hmm. clash of parties, mm -hmm. right? There, there is a true constitutional crisis. Um, Maybe in that way, there is some kind of, you know, like more massive fundamental change 
but I I don't think that's I think that's far fetched. I think the center will hold. Yeah, Paul, uh, we can keep talking forever. I certainly want to, but um, I, we we can't. So let me let me bring this down. What are to, the rest of the? Are there more lightning questions? Um, there are. I'll be quick. Um, but I don't have time to ask them. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned same for the bat next channel, exciting same episodes. Bat time. Yeah. Okay, um, but let well. me ask you this. Let sure. me ask you this. Uh, is there is there is there a question that you wish I would have asked you? Yes. Uh, uh, tell me something. Very few people know about me. Go. I stutter. I think we, I think I did ask you that. I think we've talked about that. I don't know if you asked me on the podcast. No. But since the last time I was here, uh, Doctor Janelle Vick from the Cleveland Hearing and I know her. Yeah, yeah. Center. I'm trying to do yeah. the, the acronym in my head. But Doctor Janelle Vick, she put out something I think on LinkedIn asking for individuals. And I, before this was pre-COVID, I agreed to visit, uh, be a part of a program where yeah. she wants individuals that do stutter to go talk to younger individuals. And I was like, I'm on it. So yeah, I stutter. And uh, I've, gotten, I've gotten better at it. I've never heard you stutter. I've gotten better at it. But I do. Did you, did you stutter a lot when you were a kid? Yeah. Yep. Not interesting. Mm-hmm. What 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 do you know what it took to make you not stutter a lot? Hard work. And that's I mean that's an easy judge. Like, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Hard work. Yeah. But did you have Hard to like work. did you like see a therapist? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There were I would get taken out of my normal elementary school class day mm-hmm. and yep, go go mm-hmm. out and go to a therapist. My mom and dad worked on it with me. Oh yeah. Interesting. Not easy, my friend, and not complete. No, but, but yeah. it's amazing, and because here you are, you you your job is to speak eloquently to people yeah. and persuasively, yeah. and that's a, that's an inspiration. So yeah, Paul. so I would say, and Doctor Vic was kind of like, well, "Who do you know that stutters?" And I said, "Me, yeah. really? That's yeah. amazing." Yeah, so I stutter. Um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. You know, like, you know, hey, look at me. It's just. It's a fact. Paul, um, Alex, come back and uh, and. We'll and and let's do this some more. And okay. uh, we should we should co interview somebody, sure. Yeah, yeah, maybe one of the dudes that you mentioned during this this episode. Uh, we'll bring him here and we'll fire questions at him together. Well, I'll tell you if we do state representative Kent Smith, you gotta do that one alone because Kent and I, if, if you think if you think I go off on tangents, yeah. Kent and I together, um, I would I would hate to take up any of your time when you're interviewing Kent, he's such an interesting guy. That I, I will graciously, yeah, yeah, I. Um, all right, well, um, someone else then. Yeah, uh, you are always a joy to have on the show, Paul. Thanks for the patience uh, for yeah. for me to be able to get here. No, and we had to reschedule a few times. Well, the last one was for Ian Ian Friedman. Um, so you 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 graciously stepped mind, aside, yeah. Yeah. And, and that was a good one, by the way. Yeah, Ian that was fun. is. You probably could have gone a lot longer with easily. Him. Yeah. I've, you know, it sucks because I find that to be true of everybody. Yeah. You know, like he, had, he it, had better lightning round answers than I did, though. He had some good ones. Don't, yeah, he had y- some good don't ones. Don't beat yourself up. Your, y- yours are pretty good. Um, the, I'm trying to, re- I'm trying to refresh them too. I, okay. I so, so the next time you're on, I'll, I'm going to have a completely different set of lightning round questions. Is there anything you want to get out there to the universe before we adjourn, Paul? Anything you're yeah. working on? Anything you want people oh, to know? Oh, for me specifically? Anything, anything in the world. Um, there's a lot of food banks probably mm. in the town, whoever you, wherever you are when you're listening. There's a lot of food banks. Call them up. Make a, make a little donation um, and uh, donate blood. I've done it twice during COVID. Prior to that, I probably hadn't done it in 15 years. Uh, it's, it's pretty painless. And the American Red Cross now emails me when they use a pint and tell me, hey, it's going to Baton Rouge, Louisiana or wherever. Really? So it's kind of cool. You know, the, the, the blood I donated at the North Royalton Library is now going to be helping somebody that wow. I'll never meet. So it is kind of that esoteric. We are all, everybody needs blood. Yeah. So donate blood and call your food bank. Love it. Well, and it's so easy too. I mean, everyone's got a pantry full of stuff that they won't touch or have it that, you yeah. know. I guess I'd say, call your food bank if... Either way, if you need help, call oh, your food bank. Well, there's that too. And and yeah. and I've I've come to learn from volunteering at Royaltons is sometimes there's individuals who need help, but it's so temporary. They may come up in a nice car. Yeah. But what do you? But they might not. They they might be in between a rock and a hard. Like I, the the, right. the notion of well, that person's on. Everybody's on a fixed income. 
you know, everybody, just because you make a lot of money, you could, you could yeah. have a lot of expenses too. So this notion that yeah, everybody's on a fixed income. Um, good advice, Paul. Except, of course, the guy who's listening to this. The one and only. Right. Paul, you're awesome. Jeff Thanks for Be doing Jeff this. Jeff Bezos. Right. Well, Jeff Bezos. That's right. <laughs> Except I, for him. I, 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 uh, I, I knew who you were talking about. I figured. Uh, folks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you will be seeing lots more of Council President uh, Paul Marnichek, um on this podcast and on um, lots of future podcasts um, and in lots of future election cycles, <laughs> state and national. And I have, a, I have a lot more suggestions of people I think you should have on that are you're, doing some great things in, in Northeast Ohio. You're good like that, man. You're a good connector. You're well, a good, you're a really good introducer. Some, well, you look at it. Someone did it for me. You know, someone, yeah. I'm, I'm paying it forward. Someone yeah. did it for me. Yeah. Uh, folks, we will catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, have a great and safe and healthy and positive day. We will catch you later. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we thank you for listening. And remember to check out the Gertzberg Law Firm. Whether you are starting, running, growing, or transitioning a business, or if you need to create or update your wills, trust, or estate plan, our team will give you an incredible level of personalized attention and a passionate commitment to meet your objectives. We are veteran-owned, and our award-winning lawyers have the highest ranking from Super Lawyers and AVO. We have also recently received the coveted Weatherhead 100 Upstarts Award for a second year in a row. And we are among the first Ohio business law firms to offer our clients a non-billable alternative on every single matter we handle for them and opt out of the billable hour. What we are most proud of, though, are the many things our clients rely on us for. We successfully defend them in court, but we also help them avoid the courtroom with our Cover My Six service. We protect their assets through good estate and succession planning, and we assist our clients in many non-legal business services like recruiting and business development. We want our clients to feel confident in their choices and to help them resolve any issues or potential problems quickly and efficiently so they can get back to what they love, running their businesses. More than just litigators, we are trusted advisors, problem solvers, and growers of businesses. Let us help you and your company. Call us or find us online to learn more. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next time.